Hi, good morning everyone and welcome to today's video. Well, this morning on Facebook, my friend Kendra Von Esch kind of called me out a little bit. And check out her channel, I have it linked in the description here. You know, you'll be truly blessed by it and all the work that she's doing. But she asked, she said, as a convert, can you explain how you came to love the Virgin Mary? So I decided to do this video because it'd be a very long Facebook response. Especially on my phone with my big thumbs, okay? Now, like most Protestants, and Kimberly Hahn said this best in her conversion story, that she said there were three things that kept her from converting to Catholicism. Mary, Mary, and Mary. And I kind of fell into that boat. And I kind of had those standard objections, you know. So, you know, why is Mary called the mother of God? Um, the Bible clearly says she had kids after Jesus was born. And those were my... Well, and the assumption, those were my th main three objections that I had. Um, things that I had to work through to, be, to come into the Catholic Church. So first off, was Mary a perpetual virgin? In other words, this answers the question if she had kids after Jesus or not. And I think just from looking within scripture, uh, we can solve that issue. And But first, I want to go to what the early church fathers thought. The early church fathers, a majority of them, if not all of them, actually held to this dogma. There was only a couple here and there. And remember, this wasn't something that had to have been believed, but it was something that was taught from the earliest days of the church. And so St. Augustine, for one, had this to say. A virgin conceiving, a virgin bearing, a virgin pregnant, a virgin bringing forth, a virgin perpetual. He wrote that in 411. And of course, Athanasius echoed this earlier on. Uh, St. Irenaeus echoed this earlier on. St. Jerome, big names in the faith, echoed this. So let's get down to brass tacks. Doesn't the Bible say that Mary had other children? Well, in the English language, it kind of hints that, right? Thing was, the Bible wasn't originally written in English. In fact, Jesus spoke Aramaic. And in Aramaic, there was no word for the word cousin. And so, when you're referring to blood kin, so brothers, sisters, that same word was used. That same Aramaic word was used. Now, in Greek, the closest thing we have is the term Adelphos, Adelphos boy for boy or girl and that was the common language in Koine Greek which is what the book of Matthew was written in and that was in Matthew 1246 if anyone's curious and so it says his listeners ask is this is not this the carpenter's son is not his mother called Mary and are not his brothers James and Joseph and Simon and Judas okay But remember, we got to take the Bible in its totality, not just one verse here and there. So yeah, we have the, histor the historical meaning there of Jesus speaking Aramaic, no word for brother or sister in Aramaic. But how about brothers? Jesus' brothers would admonish him, would admonish him as well in John chapter 7. Well, in Near East society, which Jesus lived, younger brothers don't admonish the older. It was unacceptable. It was totally unacceptable, totally unacceptable from a society point of view. So there's one way to look at that as well. Another thing we can do, this was the key to me. Jesus is hanging on the cross and he looks to John. He says, John, behold your mother. Mother, behold your son. If Jesus had other brothers and sisters, he would be violating the commandments by entrusting the care of his mother to someone who was not related to him. And many Lutheran theologians as well point to this fact as well as proof that Mary was a perpetual virgin. Just using scripture. Because Jesus, as the second person of the Blessed Trinity, the divine son of God, if he had another brother, 
he wouldn't entrust his mother to a non-relative. So how about Mary as mother of God? After all, there's no one that can give birth to God. God had created all things. He's always existed. When you think about it, it's kind of simple. Is Jesus the second person of the Trinity? Is Jesus God? Therefore, Mary gave birth to God. Pretty simple. There are those out there that say, no, well, it was only the person of Jesus that, well, okay, let's stop there for a second. If Jesus is had his divine and human natures for moment of conception, did Mary not give birth to both natures? If that's the case, she gave birth to God and is therefore the mother of God. Now, this doesn't, this isn't elevating her to some place where she shouldn't be elevated. This is definition. This is proper Christology here. It's giving Jesus his proper due. It has everything to say about Jesus. He's both divine and human. He didn't get a divine nature after he was born. That's adoptionism and it's a heresy that was condemned in the early church. And it's not like Nestorianism where somehow this divine nature came later on. No, not at all. He had both natures. From the moment of conception, and therefore Mary is the mother of God. Third thing for me was the assumption. To me, in my mind, at the time before I came into the church, this is the Catholic way of saying that somehow Mary was resurrected and ascended into heaven. That's not what Catholic, that's not what the Catholic Church is saying. Jesus resurrected and ascended under his own power as God. Mary was assumed into heaven by the power of her son. Because as mother of Christ, she wouldn't go through that same corruption as we have. Now, did she die? Or did she fall asleep or was she raised? That's a matter of debate. But here's the thing. The thing I came to realize. If Mary, if Mary's tomb was somewhere on this earth, and her body was in there, there would be this huge basilica, bigger than probably St. Peter's Basilica, in her honor. But we don't find that. There's no claims to anywhere having her body. If her body was buried somewhere, in a tomb somewhere, it would be one of the most guarded places in all of Christendom. We don't see that, though. Anyway, those are just some brief points that I have on how I came to understand the Virgin Mary and her role. And my apologies for that extreme close-up of my face. But when we look at iconography, where is Mary always looking? She's looking to her son. She's looking to her son. She's not saying to look at me and I'm going to save you or I'm, I'm God. No. Just like in the book of John, when she goes up to Jesus and says, we're out of wine. And he says, you know, my time hasn't come yet because this time was later on at the cross. But he still did what she asked. And she said, she told the people, do whatever he tells you. Likewise, Mary is telling us, do what Jesus is telling you to do. She leads us to her son. She's pointing to her son in all cases, saying, my son is the way and the truth and the life. So look to him. I'll lead you there. I'll lead you to him. Anyway, guys, have a great day. All right, and God bless you.